So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 medical fields that I wish I had known prior to committing to becoming a physical therapist. Because as you already know, physical therapy, you're in a lot of debt for subpar salary. So you have to think about, you're going to go through all that schooling for only that much amount of salary? Eh, maybe there are some better options. So in this video, I'm going to break each of those 10 professions down by how much schooling you need and how much salary that you'll get. So you can decide for yourself, hmm, maybe it's worth it to only go to school for two years for an associate's degree, which means you don't have to get a bachelor's for that much amount of pay. Huh, might be worth it. I'll let you decide, but as we go down the list, please make sure you comment below, hey, I'm interested in that one because it gives me a little bit more feedback on what you guys are interested in. So maybe, just maybe, I can find somebody in that profession, interview them, and give you guys a little more insight. Okay, so you're trying to decide which healthcare profession you want to be? Let's start with the list of the top 10 medical fields. Lego. Hey everyone, what's going on? My name is Dr. Lift for Change, or you can call me Justin Lee. Here on this channel, you'll find videos on fitness, physical therapy, and lifestyle that helps inspire self-change. If any of this resonates with you, feel free to subscribe and hit those notifications so you don't miss a video when it drops. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna go from order from least amount of education that you need from an associate's degree all the way to from a master's to a doctorate level. So from least amount of years to more amount of years. I just wanna let you know that I got all my information from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics and they talk about the average salary, all right? So of course it's gonna differ from state to state and location in each state, but this is the average. But the amount of education that is needed, that's accurate. So let's get started. We're gonna start with number one. Respiratory therapists. Now, these types of medical professions only require an associate's degree and they make an average salary of $61,000 a year. Now, as a respiratory therapist, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be specifically treating populations that have to deal with respiratory issues. So that's with the lungs and the throat, right? And so if you have issues like asthma, COPD, emphysema, these are the types of patients that you will see and where you can administer different types of techniques to help people get better with their breathing. All right, number two on the list, radiation therapists. Now these healthcare professionals also require only an associate's degree, but they make a whopping $85,000 a year. Wow, that is a lot. That's pretty close to what a DPT makes, and you only need an associate's degree for that. Something to consider. Now, radiation therapists will primarily see patients with cancer. And they're the ones that will be administering the radiation treatments, right? But they'll be getting their protocols and their regulations from their supervisor or from a physician. Next on the list, oral hygienist. Now again, they require only an associate's degree and they make a salary of $76,000 a year. Now oral hygienists help examine people's mouths and they help detect some things like gingivitis and help give you some tips on oral care and hygiene. So if you're interested in looking at the mouth all day, oral hygienist is for you. I feel like I'm a salesman for all these types of healthcare professions, but uh, personally for me, the mouth, nah, nah. Okay, number four on the list is a registered nurse or an RN. Now, we're gonna need a little more education for this, so we need at least a bachelor's for this profession. So you gotta go to a university for that. And they make an average salary of $73,000 a year. So I want you to consider this though. Nurses are in demand 
everywhere. And this degree is versatile in so many different fields, not only in the hospital. So being an RN, you have versatility, and that's gonna be super important, especially if you're thinking about opportunity, right? Now, also considering we're in a pandemic, are we in need of nurses? Hell yeah! Go nurses! Go nurses! Go nurses! So again, if you're thinking about job security, being an RN for $73,000 and only a bachelor's degree, that's a pretty sweet deal. And as you know, and I don't know if you've been in the, in the hospital or not, but nurses spend a lot of time with their patients. So there's a lot of, not this, there's a lot of meshing, a lot of building relationships, right? Building rapport. So if that's something that you're into and you're like, I really want to serve people and get to know them very well, being a nurse is for you. Okay, number five on the list is a physician's assistant or a PA. Now this profession requires a master's degree and they make a whopping $112,000 a year for their salary. Now, physician's assistant is a growing profession where a lot of people are starting to get into it. Where they say, hey, I don't exactly want to be a physician and do all that school, but I'm down to be a physician's assistant to make $112,000 for just a master's degree. Now, physician's assistant, of course, you know, is an assistant for the physician. So they will be following the physician around and if the physician feels like, hey, the assistant's doing a great job, then the assistant will go around and do their rounds in the hospital mostly. Now, some physician's assistants will be able to do more work, hands-on work. Um, so it just really depends on the clinic and the hospital. All right, now that we're halfway, I just want to stop for a moment, pause, and help you think about some questions you should be asking yourself when thinking about which healthcare profession you should be. So here are some questions you should be asking. What is the work environment and setting or location do I want to work in? Do I want to be hands-on with the patient like what a respiratory therapist would do? Or do I kind of want to be hands-off like a radiation therapist? Do I want to be under someone's care and an assistant for someone else and I have to pretty much take orders from somebody? Or do I want to be kind of like the head honcho and make the calls or make all the decisions? Do I want to be in a profession where I get to converse and talk with a lot of people and build relationships? Or do I want to be in a profession where I just go in, do my stuff, talk minimally, and then leave work? How much schooling am I willing to go through for certain amount of pay. Do I want to do two years for associates, four years for bachelors, six years for masters, seven more for doctorate? How much am I willing to go into debt? How much is tuition for school? What are my financial obligations? Am I married? Do I have kids? Am I living at home? Do I have a bunch of bills to pay? And lastly, is this a profession that I can see myself doing for the next 10 plus years of my life. These are just some questions that I personally considered when becoming a physical therapist. And you should definitely consider these questions when you're thinking about these different professions as well. Okay, enough with the deep talk and stuff. Let's just move on down the list. We're going on to number six, which is a speech language pathologist. And they require a master's degree as well and they make close to $79,000 a year. So this profession helps assess, diagnose, and treat patients that have issues with the throat mostly. So things when they're talking like communication and swallowing as well. So a speech language pathologist is part of what we call the rehab triangle. So we have speech pathology, physical therapist and an occupational therapist and all three of these professions are mainly helping patients with rehab using conservative care treatments so not really using any kind of medicine or not really any using kind of uh, devices so just consider that so if you're interested in rehab maybe speech language pathologist is something that you should also consider so speaking of the rehab triangle we're going to move on to the other corner which is a physical therapist 
Now you are required to have a doctorate degree for this, a DPT, and they make close to $89,000 a year. Now physical therapists, if you're watching this, you already know all about what physical therapy is. But if you're still unsure, I do have a video on what physical therapy is. <laughs> I just said that. Um, and I'll link that below. Alright, we're moving on to our next profession and the last corner of the triangle, which is an occupational therapist. Now, you need a master's degree for this profession, but by 2027, you are going to need a doctorate degree for this. So if you're about to get into it now, you're going to want to get into a doctorate of OT program. Now, this profession as of today makes $84,000 a year, but after you get that doctorate degree, maybe it will increase. Now, occupational therapists help rehab patients to get them back into doing everyday activities such as dressing, you know, washing their face, brushing their teeth, things like that. Now, really quick, guys, if you're interested in the difference between an OT and a PT and you're like, which one and what are the differences? Which one do I want? Hint, spoiler alert, I'm going to be coming out with a video on the differences between OT and PT. So make sure you're subscribed, you hit those notifications so you know exactly when that video drops. The second to last profession is an optometrist and you need a doctorate degree for that and they make a salary of $115,000. Now optometrist, of course you guys know, it has everything to do with the eyes maybe a little bit more with my eyes because it's a little bit smaller. Nah, I'm just kidding. A little bit more to do with the eyes, right? So if you're interested in diagnosing, treating eye diseases, then optometrist might be for you. <laughs> okay, number 10 on the list is a pharmacist. Now, a pharmacist, you do need a doctorate degree as well, and they make close to $128,000 a year. Now, pharmacists, as you guys know, are more than just people who count pills and they give it to you for their prescription. They are the ones that are going to be thinking about how different drugs interact with each other, how the drugs interact with your conditions, your medical conditions like high blood pressure, cholesterol, and all those types of things. And they will help determine how to use, administer, and to see if it's actually safe for you. So all those things, obviously, are super important. So give pharmacists a little bit more respect, okay? Go pharmacists. Okay, so I already know what you're wondering. Hey, what about a physical therapy assistant? Hey, don't worry, I got you. I'm gonna be coming out with a video on the difference between a DPT and a PTA, a doctor of physical therapy and a physical therapy assistant, and the differences between them and some pros and cons. So make sure again to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you know exactly when that video drops. All right, we went through all 10 on the list. I hope this video helped give you some more ideas as to which profession you should get into in the healthcare field. Now, I'm gonna say this just one time. I guess more because you can replay this, but I'm gonna say this one time. What I would highly recommend is that you go and find a specific healthcare professional that you're interested in in that specific field and talk with them, sit down with them, DM them, give them, sit them down for some coffee, offer them some coffee and say, hey, can I sit down with you and just pick your brain about what this profession is like. That's what I did for physical therapy. When I was an undergrad student, I went into the doctorate program and I found a professor and I said, hey, you, Dr. Wong, <laughs> I want to sit down with you. I want to talk with you. I want to see what it's like to become a physical therapist. So I sat down with him and I asked him a bunch of questions related to the field of physical therapy to see if it was actually a good fit for me. Like what's a day in the life like as a physical therapist? What is the work life balance like, right? Um, is the salary worth the debt? You know, things like that. So that's something I would highly recommend that you do for any healthcare field that you're interested in. Now, guys, if you want me to make a video interviewing these professionals, 
and put them on my channel, let me know in the comments and let me know which healthcare professional you want me to interview. I would love to collaborate with any of them and or if you know personally any of these healthcare professionals and you're like, hey, you and Justin should collab on YouTube to talk about your professions, I would freaking love to do that. So I'm all about collaborations. If you have a friend like that, make sure you email me, liftforchange at gmail.com and let's get in contact with you or that person. This is awkward. And I'm gonna open myself up as well. If you're interested in talking with a physical therapist, myself, as to what life is like as a physical therapist and ask me more specific questions about your life and your course and what your goals are and your vision, feel free to email me liftforchange at gmail.com. Let's set up a one-on-one -on -one video conference call and let's chat and let's see if physical therapy is the way to go. And or if you're already like saying, hey, I wanna become a physical therapist and then I need some guidance as to which courses I need to take or where I should focus on my application for DPT school, that's also a service that I have and I've helped so many students get accepted into their dream school program by doing this service. So let me know, email me, I'll put that in the description as well. So now the big question is, which healthcare profession should you get into? You already know that there's a lot of job security, more than 14% growth for healthcare professionals from 2018 to 2028. You already know that it's been proven even amongst a global pandemic with the coronavirus, healthcare professions are still employed and they're in need of more healthcare professionals like nurses. So this is something that I would definitely, definitely get into, especially if you want a job. Because I mean, if you have friends that are working, how many of them got unemployed because of this coronavirus? And who knows, maybe in the future, there may be another one like this or something else that will take your job away, unfortunately. So if you're deciding, okay, which profession I should get into, healthcare is the way to freaking go, baby. Yeah! <laughs> All right, y'all, I hope this video helped you to help inspire you to think about which healthcare profession you should get into. Of course, physical therapy is something that I really love. If you guys want a video on why I chose physical therapy amongst the other healthcare professions, besides the fact that I was a little naive to some of them, <laughs> let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely make that video for y'all because I love sharing my story and my testimony about why I become a physical therapist. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below and let's interact, y'all. Thank you, everyone. Stay lifting, stay aloha. Have a great one, you guys.